So in this video, I wanted to take a quick look at a really cool pen called the Parker Reflex. And this is kind of one of those pens that I think gets lost to time because it's not quite a vintage pen, but it is a pen that was sold a long time ago. It went on sale in uh, 2000, so about 20 years ago. It was it stuck around for a while, but I don't think that long, maybe 2008, 2007, it's hard to tell. But it's called the Parker Reflex. It's most commonly seen as a fountain pen. I bought it as a ballpoint, which is harder to find, but I think a lot cooler because it has this really extended uh, sneaker style grip. The whole lower of the pen is a hard plastic. It's textured like the grip of a sneaker, so it's called a sneaker grip. And it's something you didn't see too much then, but you see a lot now from like Zebra and a few other companies. It's a, a hard rubber, like it has no flex, but it's extremely grippy. It's held up actually surprisingly well given that the pen is somewhere between, you know, 10 and 20 years old. So hard rubber grip, metal tip protector, metal uh, kind of ring or collar here, translucent blue body. I think that looks great. You can kind of see through it a little bit. Metal clip, you can see it just has a sort of modified or modern looking Parker arrow there. Metal button. Metal button is rather wide. It looks kind of like a Pentel or a Diplomat, something like that. Uh, so it's not a very Parkery pen, you know. I look at this and it kind of has some of the lines from the Jotter, but I never really associate Parker with doing a, a rubber or sneaker style grip or doing translucent uh, plastic. So it's kind of a interesting pen for them. Again, the pen when you Google the Parker or search for the Parker Reflex, you almost always see it as the fountain pen. And that one's a lot easier to find, but I think this one is a lot more fun. The click pretty poor. I don't know if this one has not aged well, but I did buy it a uh, new old stock. So it should be somewhat close to factory condition, but it has not, it just doesn't have a great click. So it was a little bit disappointing, especially from the people that brought us the jotter, but kind of is what it is. And maybe it's a reason not to buy this pen. Maybe it's not. And on the pricing issue, you could buy these for about $10 on eBay, give or take. Usually maybe a little bit more, maybe 15, $12 after shipping but uh, they're not too expensive, and but you will have to hunt it down. It's not something you're just gonna randomly land on. Opening the pen up, we see that uh, all plastic parts inside, aside from the metal collar, uses a standard Parker Quink flow, so that's the standard ballpoint size. It's a Parker style G2 refill, so a very standard ballpoint refill. Click is fine. Again, a little bit disappointing. I did want to see if we can get, zoom in there, you go, it says Parker. And then that's Parker's like kind of code for country or model or whatever. It, they're really only uh, decipherable on the more popular pens. And this one is made in the UK. So Parker did do pens in France, the US, and then Obviously in UK as well, this one was made in the UK. I would say aesthetically, it's a pretty good looking pen. Obviously the grip is kind of what makes it distinctive. The grip combined with the translucent plastic, I guess. Uh, I would say this is more of an oddity for Parker fans than it is something I would recommend tracking down. It's a, it's a cool, fun pen, and I've been looking for one for a little bit and waiting for a really good deal, which I found this one for, especially in new old stock. Uh, you know, they're still available within the packaging but I don't really feel like paying like 25 bucks for a pen that probably retailed for three or four. From a size standpoint, it's a pretty standard size pen. Here's it next to a, a, a Bic Crystal. So right in that same price range. And here's the Crystal with the uh, cap off. Again, very similar in size. Usually when you have a stick style pen, they tend to be a little bit longer than retractables. It's pretty nice width. Oh, maybe a little bit on uh, a little bit wider than normal, maybe in the, uh, I don't know, 10 or 11 millimeter range. You could check on Sharpen. I'll put all the measurements on the website there. It's a nice, comfortable pen. I really like the grip. I like how the grip extends up and I like how the grip is, uh, it just like, there's nothing fancy going on. There's no interruptions to it. There's no hard plastic lines or anything like that. It's just all that grip. It's getting a little old, so I could kind of feel that old rubber stickiness to it. 
I don't know how sticky it would have been on uh, when it was first released, but as rubber gets older, you know, in the 20 year old type range, it has a sort of stickiness sometimes or a tackiness that isn't super pleasant. This one's in pretty good shape, you know, say maybe, uh, maybe an eight out of 10. And again, it was, I bought it in new old stock, so it wasn't used before. It's just that, that rubber doesn't always age that well. That's why when you see more expensive pens, they tend to use hard plastic and metal and other components that are gonna be as good in 20 years as they are today. Rubber's definitely not like that, but this one has held up pretty reasonably well. So reasonably comfortable pen, bigger than the jotter. I don't have any jotters here with me, but good size, comfortable to hold. The writing is gonna vary based on the refill. So I will do a writing sample, but keep in mind, you could put any Parker style G2 refill in this one. So if this quality isn't great, then you could just replace it with a brand new Quink Flow instead of an older one, or you could place it with a Parker Quink Gel or an Easy Flow 9000 or Rotring or whatever uh, Parker style G2 refill you like to use. In this case, this uh, ballpoint refill, which is at least 10 years old, has held up really well. And this is the Parker Reflex and it ships with a Quink Flow 1.0 millimeter medium. You can hear there is a little bit of, of a tip rattle or tip shake as you write. It's not there when you keep the pen on the ground or on the paper, but You definitely feel that, and that is just, there's a fraction of a millimeter of wiggle right here. You probably just see it, which is really annoying. And you could fix that with a little bit of tape, but really it just has to do with the tolerance of this tip was not perfect, uh, which is annoying, right? Because Parker made all these components, presumably they definitely made the refill. So you think they would be able to line up those two. But again, we're talking about you know, a 10th of a millimeter or something like that. Uh, so getting those two to really match is, I know a big challenge for a lot of companies and a lot of companies have had problems with it in the past. Uh, most notably Rotring with the 600 line, some of them just, and the 800 is even worse. Some of them just have some serious shake to it and that's a little bit annoying. So if that bothers you, I guess don't buy this pen, but I don't know how appealing this pen will be for a lot of people out there. So I think that really covers it. This is the Parker Reflex. It's a kind of a historic oddity that I found to be very interesting. So I tracked one down. Uh, I don't think too many people out there are gonna go ahead and buy one, but it's a fun pen to know about. And if anything, I'm gonna probably try it out in the fountain pen. I'll do a follow-up video if people find this one uh, to be somewhat interesting. So let me know in the comments or anything like that. Thanks for watching.